Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the beach. It's been quite a while since we've done a beach session. I thought we're well, coming up to winter and I thought I need to get the, I need to get the beach rods out. We've not seen the water all summer, so I'm, I'm gonna have to kind of blow the cobwebs off. That's what tonight is for. Now, anybody who watches my fishing videos, you'll know that I always like to get a bait in the water before I set everything else up. I've got two rods in. I've got one with a three hook scratching rig. That's just a three hook flapper with like size one or one oh hooks, and little tiny scraps. And on the other one, I've got a pulley dropper with two sand eels. As I bring the baits in to cycle them out and put new baits out, I will show you the rigs. But that's what I've got in there at the moment. We are fishing on a gently sloping sandy beach. Gently sloping sandy beach. And unfortunately, there isn't an awful lot of surf, like surf of motion. It's better to fish this area of beach when there's a bit of, bit of like water running, a bit of swell running in. But you can't have everything, can you? It is such a beautiful night that I thought I'll give it a go anyway. The baits I'm going to be using are mackerel left over from a session on the boat and some really old sand eels that have blown. So I think the, <laughs> I think the fish are going to come on the mackerel line. The... Um, the scratching rig on this side has got a round lead on, so it's rolling around. And the other one has got a grip lead, so it stays in a fixed position. The reason why I put the scratching rig on a rolling lead is so that it'll search out. It'll roll around until it finds a little gully and then it'll sit. So it covers a larger area. The reason why the other rig, the poly dropper rig, is on a fixed lead is because if that rolls around, often that tangles up. Sure, that's the only reason. Right, anyway. I'm going to start off leaving the baits out for 15 minutes. If I bring them in after 15 minutes, if they're still good, the next time I'll leave them out for 20 minutes. If I've left them out for 15 minutes and they come back and they're completely stripped, I'll do 10 minutes next time. Let's get set up anyway. I do, I do bring a few more things than other people usually bring. I mean, I bring a tough tub like this. One, because I love washing my hands. <laughs> I don't like getting monkey hands all over fishing rods and stuff. And also, if you get a hook, get like a fish, take it, put it straight in the bucket of water, clip on a pre-baited rig, cast out, and then come back and sort the fish out. Less chalking, more fishing. We're actually getting our first bite on the big bait rod. Now, I'll try and put a bit of that into here now. That's a bite. See how the line's dropped slack there? That's the fish that's picked it up. There it is. I was just about to pick that rod up and this one went over with a really fat doggy on it. So, put that in there. Unclip the trace. I'm actually going to give that another couple of seconds to develop. In the meantime, we'll have a look at this dogfish. Get another bait out. There you go. There's little Mr. Dogfish. See, that's the beauty about having one of these pills of water. Just stick it straight in the water. 
stick it straight in the water, let it calm down, sort yourself out, come back to it. We'll go and take that back down to the water now. While I'm waiting for a bite, what I'll do is I'll, in my tackle box, I have maybe four or five spare rigs and hook lengths. I've cast out my baits, and while I'm waiting for a fish to bite, I'll pre-bait some of them up and hang them on here. So there is a spare double sand ale on a pulley rig. And there is another two hook flapper. So as soon as I bring in a fish, I can unclip one trace, clip on a pre-baited one and cast straight out again. So it saves you all that time. It, it might only seem like five minutes, but five minutes every bait change could end up being another hour by the end of the session. So that's a whole hour of fishing time that you've missed outing or that you can gain. Ooh, get a bite. This one was actually a whiting. So same again. This is why I end all of my leaders in a swivel like that. Unclip that, clip another one on, cast it out, come back, sort the fish out. I'll really quickly show you how I've been baiting up with this mackerel. Right. I like to take a little chopping board with me. Just taking one of the mackerel, all I'm gonna do is really quickly take a fillet off. Bye. Like that. Now this can either be in long strip bits like that, or I'll cut little slithers like this to go on my flapper rigs. So if I'm baiting the flapper rigs, I'll just use little tiny slithers, but if I'm using it for the bigger rigs, I will use a piece like that. So I'll cut a couple. That'll make two big baits, and with this, I will make the rest of the small baits. Just little slithers like that. For the bigger baits, Here's one of the hook lengths that I had pre-made up. This is a panel setup, and these are three O's. So I'll take a piece of the bait, and I'll just go through, turn it over. All I'm doing is I'm threading the hook up the bait. We'll go through one more time. Just like that. And then take the panel. Wrap it around the mono a few times. And then through the flesh. There you go. Now by taking a little tiny bit of bait elastic and just giving it a quick whipping If there are crabs and sand fleas and, and little gobies and blennies and that pecking at the baits, not only does this make it more streamlined, but it holds the bait together a little bit longer. This is vital if the mackerel isn't fresh. This is quite fresh mackerel, so it's still got a decent consistency. When mackerel's old or it's been frozen and thawed out, it just goes to pap. The key point is that the hook points are proud, hook points are sticking out, the bait's streamlined, there you go, perfect. We've got what looks like a slack line bite on one of the rods.
Yep. Another doggy. <laughs> right, what I meant by a slack line bite, for anybody who isn't aware, is um, you, soon, you get two types of bite generally. You'll get a positive bite where it pulls the rod over. A slack line bite is, I've had my rods and my lines tight so it shows a bite. If the line drops slack, that means that a fish has picked up the bait and the weight, broken the lead out and has swam towards the beach. So the line is no longer tight, it drops slack. A drop back bite or a slack line bite. That's what that was. It's just a shame it was a dogfish. This is how I've been baiting up the three hook scratching rig look. Just little tiny strips. And I'm hoping there for just scratching fish, dabs, rocklings, whiting, little schoolie bass, anything like that. This is my <laughs> this is my blank saver rig. I usually stick this out first off straight away to find out if there's any little fish around. Because then there's a possibility of sticking a live bait out. Now if I was bringing in little tiny pin whiting like that, I would stick a live bait rig out. As it is, the, the whiting that I've got and the rest of the dogfish, they're too big to use as live baits generally. There's Mr Whiting. Some cracking little teeth on them, aren't they? And Mr. Dogfish. Let's get them both put back. I don't know if you can see there. We've got like a really light rain coming in. As I was just saying about little fish, the scratching rigs just come in with a dogfish and a little poor cod on. So yeah, if there's some more little fish around, I might stick a live bait rig out. If we get one more small one, I'll stick a live bait out. It's um, you know when I said before about. Like I'll give it 15 minutes and I'll cycle the bait so I'm not even having a chance now. I'm, I'm having real trouble keeping on top of the bait. Which is why them three minutes that you have, if you pre-bait a rig, it can really help you out. Unfortunately, there must have been a drop of rainwater on the microphone here, as there was no audio recorded on this clip. Thankfully though, it was just a rig wrecking bootlace conger. They can be a bit of a nuisance at times when these moving. They eat absolutely anything and just leave your rig in one big tangle. Well, the whiting are getting slightly bigger. This is a slightly better whiting. But two like this now. Sadly though, this one was deep hooked, so this one won't go back. Yeah, we are right at the bottom of the ebb now. It is bang on low water. We fish two hours down, two hours back up. Or unless it starts raining. Fingers crossed, we might start seeing some decent fish. Oodles of dogfish and quite a lot of whiting as well. Fingers crossed, no more congas as well. <laughs> right, well the bites have died down a little bit actually. Other than another half decent whiting. More oh, gently does it. They've all been really long and thin. That would be a really good fish if it put some weight on. Just make like one long fish finger, wouldn't it? And yeah, they have got some wicked little teeth in them. I'll get my tweezers on that one. He has swallowed it quite deep. But yeah. Well, this seems to be the death of another camera microphone. Believe it or not, but I go through quite a few. I was quite happy to end the session on that note. A triple shot, two dogfish and a whiting. 
A steady night's fishing by all accounts and a good way to blow the cobwebs off. No monsters, but I was kept busy. I must admit, though, that bringing these three in at the end, that extra weight, I was hoping it was going to be a big bass. But that's just fishing for you. I hope you enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.